Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College, and in this video M, we're going to focus on Henry's Law. Henry's Law simply says that a gas in a mixture is going to dissolve into a liquid according to its partial pressure. So a gas in a mixture with a higher partial pressure than a gas in the mixture with a lower partial pressure will dissolve into the liquid much better. Partial pressure, unfortunately, is not the only feature of a gas that is going to impact how easily the gas will dissolve in the liquid. We also have to take a look at its solubility. So if we look at the atmospheric air, that's our gas mixture. Remember, it's made up of carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, water vapor. Well, these gases have different levels of solubility. For instance, carbon dioxide is 20 times more soluble than oxygen. But now, if we recall what the partial pressure is for carbon dioxide at sea level, it's almost zero. On the other hand, the partial pressure for oxygen at sea level is about 160. So notice that despite the fact that oxygen has a very high partial pressure and carbon dioxide has an extremely low partial pressure, what we will see in the body is that oxygen and carbon dioxide actually go into solution at the same rate. And this has to do with the fact that carbon dioxide has a much higher solubility. So that compensates, that higher solubility compensates for that extremely low partial pressure for carbon dioxide. If we then take a look at nitrogen, nitrogen is practically insoluble in blood plasma. But if we look at its partial pressure, it is the highest at sea level compared to the other gases. It's almost 600, if I remember correctly. So nitrogen has a very high partial pressure, but a ridiculously low solubility. And therefore, typically, we're not going to see nitrogen going into solution in our plasma, except except when we go far below sea level. We learned before that when we go below sea level, at least for every 33 feet, we're going to increase the pressure by another 760 millimeters of mercury. So when we go further down below sea level, minus 66 feet, etc., the partial pressure for nitrogen is going to continue increasing. And there's going to come a point in time where the partial pressure for nitrogen is so high that it will go into solution, despite its low solubility. So there comes a point in time where the partial pressure overcomes the poor solubility characteristic of nitrogen. This is why people must really be trained well in scuba diving, because coming back up to the surface one must do this very slowly to prevent all of this nitrogen that went into solution to start bubbling out of solution inside of the bloodstream. So by moving back to the surface much slower, uh, that can be prevented and one will prevent suffering from some, something called the bends. Now, Partial pressure and solubility are two really important characteristics that are going to determine how well a gas will dissolve in our plasma. But of course, we also need to consider definitely temperature. Remember that temperature can increase kinetic energy. Uh, also the molecular weight of our gases. And then let's not forget that the state of the respiratory membrane structure, and this should say membrane structure, is going to play a role as well. So we've learned about partial pressures, we've learned about the difference in the solubility of our gases, and we've also learned about 
dead space. Remember you learned about the anatomical dead space that typically equals about 150 milliliters. So keep these things in the back of your mind. If we now take a look at the composition of the air mixtures in different locations, starting with the air that we actually inspire, then we see that that's mostly oxygen. Remember, we've looked at these numbers before. With We'll just um, round off the numbers with the partial pressure for oxygen being close to 160, the partial pressure for carbon dioxide almost zero. We're not going to include uh, any discussion on nitrogen because you just learned that at sea level, nitrogen is not going to play a role because of its low solubility. When this inspired air reaches the alveoli, it will have mixed with the dead air. And therefore, we see different partial pressures. So the fresh air that we inhale mixes with that 150 mil of dead air. And consequently, we see that in the alveoli, we now have a partial pressure for oxygen that's gone down to about 100 and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide has come up to about 40. These are good numbers for you to memorize. Partial pressure for oxygen of about 100 and for carbon dioxide about 40 in the alveoli. Now, there are additional reasons in addition to the, the mixing of the inhaled air with dead air. And that is that there is some humidification going on of the, of the air by the passages, by the, the passages that conduct the air. And the actual gas exchanging in the lungs is also going to impact these numbers. We're now ready to take a look at the factors that affect gas exchange. And so we'll do that in the next video.